Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today I want to discuss the differences in progressing away from a wall-supported squat and getting into a more freestanding squat. So I had a guy today who's been, in, I had him start working on this wall squat. So he rounds his low back and he pushes it into the wall and it kind of stays a little bit round and his head is right about there and his hands kind of reach forward um, and his legs kind of come out and then shins come straight down and then his feet stick out like that. The goal being for him to feel these glute and proximal hamstring muscles and these ab muscles helping exaggerate this pelvic position we might call a posterior pelvic tilt. Now what I want to talk about is getting him away from this wall supported variation. So there are a number of ways that we can make things more difficult. Generally, what we do is we put more weight on a bar, and that is like the easiest way to make something more difficult. We can also add more reps. We can take away the amount of time that they use to rest, or we can change the biomechanics and the assistance of everything. So in doing this, I have one, two feet on the ground, and then I have a large portion of my back in the wall. So I have these three points of contact with a very wide base of support. Now, if I instead try to simply here, I'll even show you the way that I did it. I put his feet on a little plate here, his heels on a little plate. And so then I had his toes on the ground, this and then his shin came forward, his femur came back a little bit. Let's fix this because he's getting a lot taller in this drawing. I want it to be a good comparison. So um, he's got his heel elevated, shin comes forward, femur comes back, and then we have this pelvic bone thing going on still. And he's still got a nice little round, not a too excessive round, but he's got a little round in his back and his hands can still reach forward like that. And forgive me if his ground doesn't look level. Let's do that. Okay. So the position is nearly the same. Now he needs a lot more dorsiflexion. Um, and now, most importantly, he needs to oppose gravity because now he's only got one, two points of contact. He no longer has the back of, or his back in the wall. Um, and his base of support is now very, very narrow compared to the base of support over on this side, right? I have increased the challenge by increasing the demand of balance. You now have less room for error in balance. If I start to shift my weight any one direction, I've only got a little bit of time before I'm going to fall. Now, most people are not going to fall here, but if they shift their weight far enough in any one direction, they're not going to be able to hold on to this nice rounded low back position that I'm trying to get out of this exercise in particular. Um, whereas if I'm over here in the wall, I can just kind of push into the wall. If I start to shift forward onto my toes and I can keep my heels down and then I can, okay, yeah, I'm good. Um, okay, so getting this way should be a goal of yours. You should not want, you can use this continuously, this wall supported variation as a, a um, reminder tool, okay? so. If you have somebody who walks around and carries a lot of tone in their low back, that's not gonna go away overnight. And you need to understand that if you stop doing the exercises that help you not feel so tight, like this wall supported squat here, then you're probably gonna tighten up again, okay? 
But if you can also just maintain really good positions, maybe at the end of your workouts or maybe even during your workouts, depending on what your goals are, then you can fight off those things for a lot longer, those, those tightnesses and those um, joint issues that you might run into. So trainers, I would challenge you to get people into more complicated movements. I'm gonna draw one more arrow for effect. Complicated movements by taking away some of their base of support, increasing the demand on their balance and making them still own these good positions.